This is my factory, or rather, our factory. My sons and I have a good business here. We make various novelty items of wood and plastic, and we sell to a wide market. This is my office today. Years ago, when we started in business, we didn't have comfortable offices like this. We started small. We didn't know much. Our factory was one small room. In those days, my oldest boy, Henry, and I worked in the shop every day. We made and sold just enough goods to keep going. But we had big plans for the future, and we knew we had a lot to learn. One of the things we learned was the relation between our business and the president's cabinet. We learned it this way. Dick and Mary were just home from school, and... We just found out where to write. You mean you did? I still don't understand. Oh, well, it's simple. Here, wait a minute. What's this about? That inquiry we got from South America? Mm-hmm. How do we go about setting up a South American market? Can we get any help from the government? We have to write a letter I to... I did the... write a letter, but you wouldn't let me mail it. Of course not. Look at the address. The United States government. Huh? Well, what's so wrong about that? Yes, what's wrong? Well, the government is big. There are lots of different offices. We've got to send our letter to the right one. How big is the government? How many uh, offices? Well, the government is divided into three main branches. Dick, uh, we'll go on with our work. But you explain it to Mary. So we'll all understand. All right, Dad. Come over here, Mary. Look, this book will help. It's the government manual. Oh, here. The three branches of our federal government are legislative, judicial, and executive. You see? Yes, I see that. That's fine, Dick. Now, which one should Mary write to? Well, I can't just guess. All right, look. There's a chart back here. Under the Constitution, there are these three branches. The legislative branch, that's Congress. The House of Representatives and the Senate, they make our laws. We don't want a law passed, so we won't write to that branch of the government. There's the judicial branch, the Supreme Court and our federal courts. They try cases and interpret the law. That doesn't sound like the place to write either. That leaves the executive branch. The president is in charge of that. Oh, now I know. The executive branch. We'll write to the president. He's the head of the executive department. No, Mary. Not the department. The executive branch. There are lots of executive departments under the president. Let me see that chart. We should all study this chart. Here, Ken, sand is down. Henry, you went to school. You tell some of the executive departments. Let's see, there's Department of Agriculture, State, Treasury, Post Office, quite a few. And the heads of the departments make up the President's Cabinet. The President's Cabinet? I don't see that on the chart. Well, no, the Cabinet isn't a real part of the government. That well, is what do they do? Why, the members of the cabinet meet whenever the president calls them. And they give them advice and information about what's happening in the country. It's sort of like the way we run our business, isn't it? Dad's the president, and we each have our department. Hmm. We are like the president and his cabinet, eh? Well, let's get back to our work, Henry. But is that all the cabinet does? Oh, no. The members of the cabinet have to run their departments, and that's a big job. The executive departments do things all over the country. Look, Mary, this letter we're talking about, it'll go through the post office. Well, 
That's run by the Postmaster General. In front of the post office, there's a recruiting poster. The Army is run by another executive department. Inside, you'll see wanted posters. That means another department. The Justice Department is hunting down criminals. Down the street, you'll see another executive department at work, serving people wherever they live. And of course, whenever we make any sort of financial transaction, we're working with the Treasury Department. So you see, Mary, it's almost as though the President's Cabinet were right here in town, He's doing things for us. Well, the men who wrote the Constitution certainly thought of everything, didn't they? No, I don't think the Cabinet is in the Constitution, at least not directly. The Constitution gives Congress the power to set up executive departments, and the President appoints the chief officers of these departments. George Washington started the custom of calling on them for advice, and that's how the idea for a cabinet started. I was pleased with the way Dick was leading Mary to understand it. Later, I had Dick explain it to me, too. You see, the president's cabinet grows and changes to meet the needs of the times. At first, there were only three departments. Our foreign affairs were handled by the State Department. Money and finances were the business of the Treasury Department. And our small army was managed by the War Department. In a few years, the needs of the country had expanded. Our trade in foreign seas was endangered by pirate attacks. There was a need for defense on the seas. So, in 1798, the Navy Department was established. Soon, too, as the new country expanded westward, there was a need for postal services. In 1829, Andrew Jackson invited the Postmaster General to join his cabinet. But the Post Office Department was not officially established until 1872. All during the 19th, westward expansion brought settlers into contact with Indians, with natural resources, with homestead land. To meet these domestic problems, the Department of the Interior was set up in 1849. About the same time, there was a growing need for some nationwide federal law enforcement agency. So, in 1870, the Justice Department was set up. So, following the needs of the people, new departments were set up. In 1889, the Department of Agriculture was established. In 1903, the Department of Commerce and Labor. Then, as labor problems became more acute, in 1913, a separate Department of Labor was established. And those were the executive departments, the cabinet posts, at the time Dick was explaining them. Of course, there have been changes in the years since then. I see. The cabinet changes to meet new needs in the country. And I'll bet there'll be other changes in the cabinet someday. Well, our letter about selling things in South America. We know it should go to one of the executive departments. Now, which department? Well, it might be the State Department, Foreign Affairs. But I think it's the Commerce Department we should write to. That sounds right. Let's look up the Department of Commerce and see what offices there are listed. Commerce. Say, here we are, Bureau of Foreign and Domestic Commerce. That sounds like just the place to write to. Dad, we found it. You know where to send the letter now? Yes, Pop. Good. You know, I think it's learning things like this that's going to help us expand our business. And I was right. Marjorie's letter opened the way for us to do of many instances when knowing something about our government helped our business. You'd be surprised how many times since then we've come into contact with agencies of the executive departments, customs officials, transportation and shipping agencies, tax agencies, labor agencies, social security, and of course, the armed forces. There's another example of how the President's Cabinet adjusts to meet new needs. Out of the needs of the Second World War 
grew a reorganization of the departments directing our armed forces. And, very likely, there will be more changes in the cabinet and in the functions of the executive departments. Just as we've done in our business, you'll find yourself coming in contact with the executive departments of your government. So, it will help you to know about these departments and about the president's cabinet.